All right, so I'm gonna go over my workflow for Lightroom uh, 5 and Nick software, now owned by Google, uh, HDR Effects Pro 2. So what I do when I do HDR photography is I do between three and 12 exposures. Um, most of these photos are gonna be around nine exposures. And then I merge them in uh, through Lightroom into HDR Effects Pro 2 and then bring them back in and do some little tweaks to them. So here we go, I've got a set of nine exposures right here. So I just click the first one and then uh, select all eight of them, all the other eight of them. Um, and then I find an exposure that's right in the middle, like a neutral exposure. And I do the white balance first before I take it into Nick software. Um, I find that make, this makes it easier to, um, to set the white balance and make sure the color's correct before, um, or in Lightroom before I go to Nick software because it's just easier. Um, Lightroom does a better job of controlling white balance. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll go to the white balance presets and go to auto and see what it does. And sometimes it freaks out and then I just do it manually. Um, but I'll tweak it sometimes just to make sure it's perfect before I take it out. out. Um, that's good. And then I'll go down and I'll hit sync and then make sure that it's syncing with white balance at least. Do that and then you right click on the selection and you go to export HDR effects pro two and then you have to wait for it to export all the photos. All right, so now it's loading up. And then it'll pop up with a little screen that asks you if you wanna do ghost reduction and alignment and chromatic aberration uh, repairs. So I do always do the chromatic aberration just because you normally need it. So I click on this little, one of the sliders that controls it and uh, that brings up the box that allows me to zoom in and check it. And you wanna look at an area of contrast because um, you can see right here, um, you've got these green lines right here and there's some pink on the outside. And that'll be your red and cyan slider that you take it to fix those. And you can see how it's kind of evening them out. I'll make it extreme so you can see where they are. And then you bring it back so that it's more neutral. And then you do the same thing with the blue and yellow. The blue and yellow is typically harder to see, but you can tell it's there. So sometimes I'll take it to extremes on both sides and then find the middle. So there we go. We'll say that's good. There's no ceiling fans or anything in this uh, photo where the ceiling fans are turned on. Or there's something that would be moving so I don't need ghost reduction. Um, so I'll click create HDR and now it's merging them and aligning them. Now that they are merged almost all right there we go so now that they're merged you can see that the white balance looks better than if i were to have brought it in um, without changing it in lightroom and how i do the hdr adjustments um, is i start with the tone compression because that's what takes if you've got a really bright picture it brings it down it brings the darks up and it kind of decides how much you want to compress the colors together for the dynamic range. So if I were to take this all the way up, it'll look bad, but it'll be not very dynamic. Um, so as you can see, it brought up the darks that were in the stairs, the stuff over here. It brought down the brights that were here and in the light. So normally you just have to find a good balance of where it's a good, uh, I guess, ratio between or a good dynamic between the darks and the lights. Um, if you were to go all the way to this side, the stairs would be really dark, the window would be really bright. But you just gotta find that middle ground where it doesn't look fake, but it still allows you to see that full dynamic range. And sometimes if it's bringing up the darks too much, what you can do is you can, um, you can like start it to the left a little bit more so it's less dynamic and then use your highlights to bring down the window and your shadows to bring up the stairs. Um, and then contrast would help with that too. So you can do that and it'll bring the stairs down a little bit, but it also brings in the vignetting around the outside, which isn't good. Um, I typically set my HDR method. I set the depth all the way down because I think it's too harsh if you do one of the other ones. So I either use uh, the first one or the second one, which is off and subtle. And that's really all I play around with for the, uh, the HDR method. And then you can always adjust the strength here 
it's very, very subtle when you do that, but depends on the photo also. So I also will tweak the exposure sometimes if it needs it. Um, this one does a little bit, it's a little bit dark. And then that'll sometimes mess with your dynamics. Um, so you have to go back and play with that. Really, it's just a balancing act of getting everything to kind of work well together. And you'll still have to tweak the white balance occasionally. Sometimes you'll add saturation, sometimes you won't, depending on the photo. Um, it's really just kind of playing with it and understanding what all the controls do in order to make the photo balance well, because HDR is a tricky thing to do. A lot of people have given it a bad reputation because they do a really poor job of it. Um, but what you want to do is you want to make the photo still look realistic, but allow you to kind of bring down that, bring down that dynamic range to create a, a better experience in the photo. I like showing the dark stairs. Another really cool feature about the software is the structure uh, slider, which I don't use much for real estate, but for landscapes and things like that, it really adds a, um, a crisp look. It's like a mid-tone contrast kind of thing. You can see it really does a lot of work to the floor um, down there. But I'll bring it up a little bit just to add a little bit of more detail in the texture. Um, but I think that's good for this photo. So then when I'm done with that, I'll hit save. And then once it does that, I always go in and I select the photo and then I rate it five by pressing five on the keyboard. So I give it five stars. And then when I'm done, what I can do is I can go to filters and then go to rated and then it has all my completed photos and I can do a final export with that. Turn the filters back off and then go on to the next photo. So select all the photos and then go in and change the white balance. I'll just start with auto on this one to see how it looks. I need to bring up the tint a little bit and sync it and then once it's synced right click on it export HDR FX Pro 2 all right now time to do the chromatic aberration um, fix so come down here you can see it's pretty close. It's still got some yellow and blue that you need to work out. And you're never going to get this 100% perfect. I don't want to say never. You, there's a chance you will. But sometimes it's difficult too because there will be one spot where it'll work and then if you come up to the ceiling fan it's going to be different. You can see that the the cyan red slider needs to be moved around some. It's really hard to see these in photos unless it's severe. Um, and what essentially chromatic aberration is, is where your lens, if it's a wide angle, is mainly when it happens. Um, it will be so that when the light comes into the camera to get recorded on the sensor, some of the light doesn't get to the camera at the same time, so you'll have fringing, which is what those colors are, the cyan and the uh, blue and the yellow. So now the photo's merged, and um, a lot of times I'll save my uh, final photo on the left side here. You can go down and do uh, the plus side up here up by custom, and then save a preset. Um, I'll show you how to do that once I do this photo because a lot of times when you're editing one house it'll end up having a lot of similar settings and you'll just have to tweak things here or there and it'll look fine. So that just kind of speeds up the process. It's a little shortcut that you can take. So start with the tone compression. You can see that it's not really doing much on the inside but it's bringing those windows down. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the highlights. There we go. Contrast, and then I'm going to need to bring the exposure up just because it's a darker photo. And then bring the shadows up as well to try and get rid of some of this uh, vignetting on the outside and on the bottom. Contrast, because that'll help out as well with getting into some of the dark parts. I don't want to do structure on something like this because a lot of times when you have carpet, it'll just show a lot of the streaks and things like that. Um, I'll show you. So yeah, that looks ugly. 
it looks like the carpet's stained if you do that. So I'll maybe even bring it down a little bit to hide some of that. Um, bring up the saturation to kind of highlight those windows. Adjust the color temperature a little bit to cool it down some. Um, change the HDR method and see how that got rid of a lot of the dark parts. That's a lot of the reason why I don't like the the HDR method, the depth, because the depth is a, it, it does some strange things to it. You can see that if when you turn it on, it kind of adds little dark spots here and there. Um, it's like a softer contrast. So now I can take the, uh, the tone compression down a little bit, maybe even the exposure. Play with the highlights to see if I can give that a better balance. Shadows are fine. Contrast up a little bit. Now I'll bring it back down. Yeah, and I'd say maybe bring the saturation down a tiny bit. And same with the temperature. There we go. Then uh, to save it, so let's say I'm going to use this again. Hit the plus sign right there. And then enter the name. So we'll do it 001. Um, just for namesake right now to make it quick. And then I'll show you next time you come in, let's say that uh, you've got your default, let's say that's what the default looks like. Um, you can go up to one and start there and say, oh, I just need to tweak this and that um, to make it perfect. And I'm actually gonna bring the tent down some because it looks a little, a little red or pink. Maybe bring the contrast up some, maybe even the exposure. There we go, and then I'll hit save. Then when it brings it in, click on the photo, hit five on your keyboard to set the rating, and then you're good to go. So that's kind of my Lightroom with uh, my Lightroom workflow with HDRFX Pro 2. Um, it works really well with Lightroom, and I've found that it helps so that when I go to export, I can just export multiple file sizes for clients. I can do, um, when I export, I do a 1200 pixel uh, long edge JPEG, and then I also do a full resolution one if they were to do print advertising. So that's the end of this video. Um, that's pretty much my workflow.